fighting out of the red corner. It is Travis Long. Travis Long is 5'10". He's 136 pounds. This is the amateur bantamweight here division at another one at 19 years of age. And it was funny in the last fight, Charles and CD, uh, uh, C Charles and CD, CD and Sadiq, sorry, <laughs> that uh, Fuller during his interview at the end said that when I was a kid, I'm like, yo, man, you still a kid. <laughs> yeah, yo, bro, you can't drink yet. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. just got out of high school. But uh, this uh, Travis Long making his MMA debut out of Charlestown, West Virginia. You know, and it looks like he's from the same camp over there as the fight earlier in the night. Yes, he was Tre just in the corner earlier. Yeah, same cornerman, tremendous uh, outfits they have going there. They definitely color coordinated it. Um, and again, you know, this is an interesting one. You know, Travis wrestled in high school. He, he has done kickboxing as well. That alone is going to give you a little bit of a different look. You'll have already competed before. You understand some facets of the striking. And, um, you know, look, again, he's tall. He's light. That's going to be a, some inherent advantages he has for him. And uh, I guess we'll see how it shakes out for him. Obviously, Zach Vincent ran into some issues in his debut. But I would tell you, even he had his moments as well. Yeah, it's always hard, um, especially from a professional, to look at somebody that's coming from an independent gym. But, you know, that doesn't mean the person can't fight. It just means they don't have the proper guidance at this moment. Sometimes they are tough enough to get the wins out of the way and then look for proper guidance in the future. Yeah, All right, absolutely. let's throw it down to JP and get the blue corner introduction. JP? His opponent fighting from the blue corner, it is Reed Dombrowski. Reed Dombrowski, 5'6", 135, 28 years of age. He's fighting out of Makito, out of Arlington, Virginia. We've seen a bunch of guys from Makito before. This is the first time, though, we've seen Reed come out here. He's 28 years of age. And this is where we run into that catch-22, Sadiq, that we talk about, Charles, all the time, is that when you're the older fighter, especially when you talk about a 19-year-old and almost a guy who's 30, you're in a no-win situation. <laughs> you go back and talk to your friends, you say, hey, uh, I beat up a 19-year-old. They're like, oh, cool. And then you go back to your friends and go, hey, I got beat up by a 19-year-old. So you're in a lose-lose, right? Well, you know, like Sadiq was talking about earlier, now we have so many guys who start training it. That's a good 12, point. That's you know? a good point. And, like, Johnny's got a black belt at 19, and I would tell you, if a black belt beat me up, I'd be like, yeah, that's all right, you know? Like, <laughs> what happens? You know, he's a black belt. Yeah, I might yeah. leave out the fact that, you know, he's still got some baby fat on him, but, <laughs> yeah, right? you know, one thing I will tell you is, and, and Sadiq, you're, you're now getting a little bit older, you're getting a little bit stronger, you're probably filling out in ways you wouldn't realize I'm the same boat. Kevin, you're past that point. Easy. But typically, <laughs> you know, you start to get stronger as you get a little bit older. And, that's and, a fact. And you know, at that 28, that's when you're running into your prime right now. Hey, exactly. listen, I felt great around 40. Now that I'm this age, I don't want to tell you, <laughs> I don't. Like, right? But 40, I actually felt pretty good. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, I, a lot of people say, oh, you know, when you hear LeBron James is out of his prime, he's 31. <laughs> Let me tell you, when I was 31, I was ready to rock, man. Yes. Like, 31 was perfect for me. I felt tall. And well, to be like honest, I shrink. the sports also matter. Depen uh, that's depending true. on what sport that's you true. play. Because look at those girls that do gymnastics. Their prime is like 16 years <laughs> yeah, old. Yeah. So, so yeah. it is what it's it is. It's a great point. And, you know, one of the things they used to talk about in MMA 10 years ago, this was when Roy McDonald was coming up and John Jones was coming up, and they said, oh, man, MMA, it's going to be all these young phenoms. But the opposite has happened. Exactly. We've had athletes who are into their late 30s coming out and doing amazing. Glover Teixeira is in his 40s, better than ever. So... That should tell you, this sport's got a long runway if you take care of yourself. All right, bout number three, let's throw it down to JP. We'll get the official introductions. JP, take it away. All right, we've got three rounds of MMA action. Our referee, Victor Malamala, fighting out of the red corner. He's fighting for Independence MMA. Stands five feet, 10 inches tall from Charlestown, West Virginia. It's Travis Long. Travis Long, 19. He's an independent out of Charlestown, West Virginia. And fighting out of the blue corner, standing five feet, six inches tall, weighed in at 135, fighting for Mikido from Arlington, Virginia, Reed Dombrowski. Dombrowski, 5'6", 135, out of Mikido from Arlington. This is the first time we've seen him. JP will make his way out of the cage. Victor Malamala is going to be the referee for this. It's scheduled for three three-minute rounds. We'll get the camera out, get the seconds out, get it all locked up, ready to go. Victor's going to call both fighters to the middle. The, listen, Sadiq. Charles, when you get called to the middle, are you actually paying attention to what he's saying? Tell the truth. Not at all. I want to <laughs> from, from the walkout all the way to when the referee says fight, it feels yeah. like the longest time yeah. in the world. I don't hear anything. I'm just ready for the like, fight. I know he's saying some rules, but I don't care what he's yeah. saying. Man, I might not be paying attention until I get hit the first time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Start at round number one. Victor checks with the officials. Both fighters want to make sure he's good, and there's the bell. We're going to not touch gloves. We're going to go right to fighting, right on top of the Cagezilla logo. Round number one here, and the bout number three, this is a Bantamweight division. 
Reed is not here to play. He got in his face right away, ran straight across the octagon. Yeah, yeah, he did. And when he came out, I, I thought he thought this was like a boxing ring. Oh. And he ran over to the cage and he tried to bounce off the uh, off the chain link like he does, you know, boxing rings when they go side to side. Yes. That was a good single leg attempt from Travis, but he went into some strong hips, you know. It was a good, um, oh, now he, he was able to get it again and run the pipe. Yeah, he's in deep on that single, and that was good defense from Reed, but I like how Travis just kind of stuck with it and kept, yes. kept driving forward. Now, here's where a little bit of the debut jitters are there because both of those singles were very good attempt. I feel like he could have still finished that takedown that he was on, but a little bit of nervousness got in the way. Dombrowski will be in the black trunks with the red trim. Long will have the little bit higher hair there. He's got a little fade going on. He's got black trunks with some red and white lettering. He'll have the black gloves with red tape. Dombrowski with the blue gloves all the way around. They stand right on top of the Cagezilla logo. Not a lot of action right here, just trying to weigh each other out. Both guys are kind of having a little bit of problem finding their range, and yep. that's what's going on right now. They're missing by just an inch. Yeah, right there, was that was a perfect example too, Zadik, right as you were calling it. One thing I like that I'm seeing out of Reed is he's driving forward a lot. He's, he's doing his best to cut off Travis, and he's not afraid to continuously push forward. Now, if I'm Travis's coach here, I'll tell him to look for that single leg again, you know, because it's still there. And every time he moves in for his one-two combination, the single leg is staying right in front of his face. So he could mix that one-two and go straight down to the single. And both fighters, if they're smart, they go right back. They look, they take a look at YouTube and take a look at the fight and hear what Sadiq Youssef has to say to you. And he's in on that single again. Oh, and he was able to get yeah, it right. He gets it again. Yeah, yeah, so his takedowns are good. Now he just has to work on his control. Right in, right in front of the Tony's Pizza logo, you start to see Reed just start pounding on him. Yeah, now something for you to watch for Travis is how low he's keeping his head. And that's just because he doesn't want to get hit, you know. Right now, oh, now he's in on a really good takedown. So we're going to get to see what their jiu-jitsu looks like. Yeah, he was able to grab that wrist from the bottom and then use that to flatten out Reed. Now, this is a position that, if you're just coming from wrestling, is going to feel so foreign to you. Because right. at this point, the fight is over when yeah. you're a wrestler. But now you're in MMA, you got to find something else to do. But Travis Long being 5'10 compared to a 5'6 when you start getting on the ground, I think is what matters. I think that they start making a difference in the leverage. Continue, continue. Yeah, you're making a good point. Well, uh, oh, Reed, Reed is trying to set up a good arm bar here, man. If he could cut the angle, the arm bar is there. But... Not for nothing, Kevin, as you were saying, the leverage is kind of what prevented that from happening. It, right. it was too long, which allowed it to occur, but then he was able to drive forward, and he's putting all of his weight into Reed, which prevented him from extending his legs and finishing that armbar. I think as you're a taller fighter in MMA, you want to stay on top, right? As, I mean, you stay on your feet, try to get that reach involved. But as soon as you go to the ground, I feel like the younger, the little smaller guy probably can get in there. Oh, nice. Look, oh. At, look at Travis Long. Oh, wow. He's uh, Travis doing, Long. A, doing a little bit of showboating in between rounds. He might want to wait until he gets the W <laughs> and start going that. But listen, if you come out here, he's probably been hearing some chirping from some of those guys over from Makito. Makito travels well in here. That's right. Fact, so you make it through fact. the first round. Somebody over there is probably doubting him. So he made it through the first round. And if you're over in Travis's, Travis's corner, you're telling him, hey, keep the pressure on and keep doing what you're doing. That's a fact. I'm going to tell him, look for that single leg every time because I don't feel like Reed has made a good adjustment to it yet. No, that's a great point. And, you know, I, I tell you, man, Travis's single leg, is he sticks with it. You know, I thought Reed had some good initial defense, that front line defense. Yes. But then when Travis would either reshoot or take a different angle, his instinct was to kind of drop backwards. Yes, it's exactly as you said. Every time Travis would cut the corner, Reed went straight to his back. Brent Hess over here as a second here for Reed Dombrowski. Oh, Reed is almost in the middle of the, yeah. of the cage. Right. Brent, the uh, uh, says, when go. you get a Hess in your corner, they're like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah. you got to step it up. We can't lose this. Reed Brent, is ready to go. Brent Hess is a tremendous coach, and they run a real good gym out of there over in Mikeito. All right, here we go. Start around number two right on top of the Cagezilla logo, kind of pushing back for, now, for now Travis. Tra Travis is going full wrestling. You saw him changing levels, changing levels, looking for, for the takedown. Didn't want to get hit, that's for but sure. I don't like how low he's keeping his head, you know. He's keep putting his head in a lot of danger. He could get caught in a guillotine right now, to be honest. He just has to pick his head a little bit higher. He has a good connection right now on a double leg. He just has to pull back and take him straight down. Dombrowski with his back up against the cage. He has the black trunks with the red trim. He's got black gloves and blue tape. You Long know. is trying to put him down on the ground. He's on top now. He's got that black glove with blue, uh, red tape on him with uh, black trunks with some red and white lettering. You know, that was a decision there that Reed made to just start kind of punching the body. And when yes. he did that, he stopped defending that takedown. Yes. 
and, uh, and you that know, last that last transition was more of what something Reed did wrong more than right. what Travis did right. Yeah, and, and these are the learning moments that when he looks back and you know so the, he's listening to you and he's watching what's happening here, he'll be like, yeah, I shouldn't have done that, right? Because even though I'm landing these deep shots of the body, it's not enough, and it won't be enough to offset either the judges or the impact of being put on your back, exactly. and really at more risk of getting beaten up. Exactly. Now that we're already in this position, Reed needs to do what he did before and walk his feet up. Because when he did do that, he was able to almost set up a nice arm bar. But as long as you're just staying here with your feet in a regular closed guard, you're just gonna get punched in the face for the rest of the round. And this is and this is where some of the crowd, especially when they're new and we fill the place up like this, doesn't understand. They wanna see the excitement. They wanna see what they see on television. But these guys are actually working. Yes. They're working hard on the ground. For most folks here, you're going to start to hear, oh, boo, you know, hurry up, hustle up, you know, get them, stand them up. But this isn't that kind of fight. And the reason why it might look a little boring to the people on the outside is because they don't know how little, how the little mistakes make such a big difference, yeah. you know. So if you're the guy on the ground, you don't want to make too many movements, especially this is like your amateur debut, you know. You want to make sure you take your time with everything you're doing. One minute left to go here. It's scheduled for three three-minute rounds here in round number two of bout number three of this amateur bantamweight between Travis Long and Reed Dombrowski. Reed on top trying to take control. Travis on his, or excuse me, Travis on top. Reed on the yeah. bottom trying to posture up there. Yeah, now it might not be that exciting, but Travis is finding a smart way to win this fight right now. Yeah, he's got good control and he's in his corner too. Now, I'm not sure what advice he's getting, but so far I think he's <laughs> winning this fight. That's a fact. Now his hands are in a little bit of a compromising position. Oh, nice, but he, he's able to pass straight to side control. Reed needs to get on his side and start shrimping. Wow. Good knee from Travis. And Travis would have started driving some knees into the ribs of Reed there. Might have been able to free some things up. Now, at this point, Reed needs to start looking for sweeps. I think we're, we've been in the fight long enough to realize that Travis is able, he's, he's able to defend himself decently, you know. So now you got to start looking for sweeps. Try to find a way to get on top. All right, 10 seconds left here in round number two. Oh, he's looking for a Kamara, but there's not enough not time, enough time in this. There it is, the end of round two. Travis will finish out on top. That's that's two rounds down now for Travis, man. Reed needs to find he needs to figure something out. He needs to either adjust his stance or focus on stopping those takedowns no matter what. Travis is very, very tired. He's yeah. very, very tired, and it's obvious when you look at his body movement. Reed is not as tired, but he has a hard time stopping those takedowns. Yeah, and you know, one thing I liked out of Reed was that he was doing a good job of cutting off Travis and backing him up, but then he would either let him out and back up himself and let him out of the corner or get heavy and get taken down. So he, these are the adjustments he's got to make, right? When you put Travis in a position you don't, he doesn't want to be in, just start letting the hands go and make him shoot out of desperation from far away yes. instead of walking into that shot when you're heavy on that front foot. Yes. And from the both fighters' body language, I definitely feel like Reed is the more pressure guy. And the way Travis has been shooting those takedowns with his head so low, if I'm Reed, I will look to either catch a guillotine on that or push his head down and stuff it with your hips. All right, we'll get the seconds out. Here we go, the start of round number three. Victor Malamala makes sure everything is all ready to go. The cage is all locked up. He checks with all the officials, checks with both fighters, and here we go. Start of round three. They touch gloves this time. That's shocking. Reed's kind of being nice now. Let's see how long they stay on their feet this time, Sadiq. Now, Reed has to be a little bit careful. He doesn't want to He doesn't want to drive in too much yet because that's exactly what happens. The guy's just going to change levels and get an easy takedown. And that's what we were talking about in between the rounds. It's, you know, you got to cut him off. you got to land heavy hands. But you can't get too heavy on that front foot. You can't get too close where Travis can just drive you into the ground. And, you know, we didn't see any urgency out of Reed to get up in the last two rounds. Yes. Maybe a little bit more here. Maybe Travis is a little bit more tired. But... He's got to start moving. Now, Reed has his head right on the cage. If I'm him, I'm going to try to work to my elbow so I can start cage walking, you know. Um, it, it might seem counterintuitive, but a lot of guys find it a little bit easier to get up when the cage is behind them than when they're just in the middle of the mat. Travis looks like he's putting this whole 136, 510 weight right on top of Reed. And being the smaller guy on the ground at 5'6", it's tough with all that. It doesn't look like a lot at 136, but when you're that small, 5'6", he's probably having a tough time doing that. Travis is making some smart decisions here, man. He's working his way to the victory. And yep. to be honest, these guys are going three three-minute rounds. This experience right now is going to be very, very valuable to both of them as, as their careers goes on. Yeah, especially for your debut, to get a full nine minutes of work. And this type of technical work, too, where it's not like a street fight. You exactly. know, these guys are they're striking a little bit. There's some offensive wrestling, some defensive wrestling, some transitions. Yes. But if you're Reed, you got to start, you know, maybe, let's get those feet on the hips. Let's start pushing away. Let's make this difficult for Travis because he's tired. 
yeah. the punches to the side of the head. It's, it's like you're saying, when, when Reed goes home and rewatches this fight, one of the biggest things he can take away is his decision making, you know? There's some things that are not worth doing depending on how much time is left on the clock. One minute left to go here in this third and final round of bout number three here. Cage Hill is 69. Travis Long and Reed Dombrowski. Reed coming out of Arlington, Virginia, out of Makito. Obviously, Brent's right in his ear right there. And if you want to be somewhere coming down the stretch, it's probably a good spot, CD. Yeah, I like the fact that Reed started looking for butterfly hooks, but that's what he should have been doing from the get-go. Because now, as long as you have your guard closed and you're not an offensive guard player, you're just wasting time. You're letting Travis run the clock out. Yeah, and, and you know, wrestling is just such a great base, especially for amateur MMA, for situations like this. You know, you're put in a position where, all right, maybe you've done some jujitsu, you've yes. rolled with some guys, but you're not used to having somebody do everything they can to hold you in place. Yes, a lot of times in the gym, you get guys who take you down and try to advance and try to put you in a position, but it's not the same as somebody holding on and not letting you move at all. Victor had to put the mouth guard in for Travis Hall with about 10 seconds left, which kind of, oh, excuse me, about 20 seconds left to go. And the fight kind of slowed some things down. But Reed, for, oh, good elbow from Travis Long. Right to the side of the face of Reed. But he's pushing him away. Yeah, you see, the, uh, and, you, and he went right back to his guard. You see, he's, I see signs of greatness from Reed. It's just he's making small mistakes, you know. Push, put your foot under his push away. Look for submissions. Little things like that are great. But, oh, he's looking for a triangle. He's looking, oh, it's not enough time. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I'll tell you, I was, I was looking at his coach while that was happening, yeah. and his coach was pretty frustrated. You know, we're gonna just, we're gonna play that back for you one time, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> the sound of defeat in your voice. Oh, because I've seen like little flash of like greatness yeah. from Reed. Yeah. You know, it's just the decision making is not is not all the way there yet. But hey, this is what the amateurs are for: is for you to learn these lessons. And I and I totally get it, right? This is the first time for both of these guys being inside of this cage. So when you start talking about the experience, you're in front of a thousand folks in here, right? The, the lights, the cameras, uh, you know, you have to you have to find some sort of different different gear as amateurs and their first time to win these fights. Yeah, and, and again, you know, I think Brent is going to be able to tell him a lot. Brent is such a good coach that he probably recognizes, hey, your first fight, you're not being yourself, no problem. Here's the things we have to adjust. Here's the decision you made that cost you, but here's the things you did right. And he'll be able to help him take a little bit of everything to make those adjustments for the future. And, and hopefully we see more for Reed, but uh, hats off to Travis. You know, look, it's not easy fighting out of an independent gym, you know, training, coming in here with but your buddies, but yeah, he me, definitely my, showed me out. Me and a couple of my friends are going to go do an MMA fight. <laughs> 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 All right, it looks like Victor's got, or excuse me, JP's got the card from the judges. Victor's going to grab the fighters, and we'll throw it down to JP. Right now, we'll get some official introductions. JP, take it away. All right, big round of applause for both fighters. All right, our winner tonight via unanimous decision, it is Travis Long. Well, there you have it, fighting out of the red corner. It's Travis Long with his MMA debut here from Charlestown, West Virginia.